Hey everybody, today we're doing a product review on this thing right here, which is the EcoFlow Wave, which is a portable air conditioning unit. But on this video, I'm going to get into every nitty gritty detail that I possibly can, my opinions on it, what I think about it, how I feel about it, where I would use it, how I would use it. We also have the battery extender and all of the accessories. And lastly, I'm also gonna talk about what I don't like about it. So this is going to be as much of a review as I possibly can, all coming up in this video, here we go. All right, everybody, if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. I do a lot of, uh, well, van life videos, and behind me, I'm doing a new tiny house build. I am a DIYer. I don't consider myself a professional because I don't build for client. I do build for fun, and every now and again, I do sell the products that I do you know, build. Building vlogs, I do adventure vlogs, I do a lot of van life tours or tiny home tours as well. Every now and again, I get a really awesome product dropped off in my doorstep and I get to do a review on it, which is what today's video is about. Like I said, the EcoFlow Wave. EcoFlow has been very known for power systems, portable power systems. I do not believe that they really dove into anything outside of that portable, you know, power station. So this is kind of their, I think they're one of their very first products outside of that. However, they kind of go hand in hand with each other because somebody that wants to have a portable air conditioner is gonna need a lot of battery power to run it. Having a company that is very good at portable power stations to make one of these is remarkable. When I first opened it up and I first turned it on, I was actually truly, truly impressed by the sleek design of it, how it operates, and, and really the whole power consumption. So in front of me right here, I have the, uh, the two manuals, the manual for this and the manual for the Wave. I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that I am reading directly from the manual, it's not a big deal. All right, so the net weight, I don't know what the difference between a net weight and gross weight would be, but the net weight is 38.58 pounds. So 38, 39 pounds, that's not so bad. I can lift it up. Very luckily, there is a little handle here for your hand to, to grip it here, and then there is a handle in the back to grip it as well. I did not get a hernia just then, so it is very possible for someone to pick up 38, 39 pounds, sweating a little bit from it, but we're good. Dimensions, we're looking at 20.39 from front to back, and then we're looking at 12.2 going across, and then we're looking at a whopping 16.38 high, under 17 inches in height. Now you cannot tip this over. You have to keep it upright because there is Freon in there or there is some sort of refrigerant. I actually don't know if they still use Freon, but there is some sort of refrigerant in this already pre-refrigerized. I don't, I don't think that's a word, but it's already pre in there. You don't have to have it already. You don't have to put it in there you don't have to have a air conditioning company come out and do that. Now this is battery powered, so I can turn it on, which I will do here in a second by just hitting the power button and bada bing bada boom, this thing can run. However, if you do plug it in, the power cable. Now it is runs off of 120 volt power, okay? There it is, pretty simple. All your ports are right here on the side. Beautiful thing about the Wave is that it also has a solar and a car charging port capability, which means I can take solar panels and recharge this, or again, if I'm driving in a car, in the I can use the cigarette lighter port or the 12 volt port inside of a car, I can now charge it through that port as well. Nobody ever reads these, but I really think everybody should because it actually does teach you quite a bit. So obviously I definitely forgot to mention that this will only run with the battery power as a portable air conditioning unit. You have to have the battery hooked up to this to be off grid or not being plugged in. Or what I really like about EcoFlow is EcoFlow has multiple batteries. This is what they're known for. So not only do they have this add-on battery specifically for the Wave, they are also making this capable of charging off of their other power system. So they make cables to do that, which is this right here, which will plug into that. And instead of going into this battery, you can actually plug it into one of their other portable batteries. Before I turn it on and before I plug it in, before I go into all the accessories, 
I know I'm gonna get this in the comments. How long will it last? That is the hardest question to answer when it comes to air conditioning units. And the reason that is, is because it depends on where you are and the time of year that it is. It depends on climate, it depends on humidity levels, it depends on compressor on time. All of those things are really dependent on really how long this thing can last for. Let's kind of plug this in to its battery source and we'll show you how that kind of operates. So all you do here is you lift up. Oh boy. You just heard that click. This actually goes up and down, okay? And then you can just plug into this bad boy right there. There it is, that is it. Because you're adding on the battery, and this is already a net weight of 38, 39 pounds, you are now adding the battery, which is another 17 pounds. So keep that in mind when you are lugging this thing around because you've got that 38, 39 pounds plus another 17 plus pounds right here. Battery's already on. And there is the power. It is on cooling mode, but I was gonna talk to you guys about the different modes. There is a cooling mode, like an air conditioning, and there's also a fan mode. Everything is through a digital reader right here, and actually, you may have just heard that, you may not have. The compressor just kicked on. So when the compressor kicked on, the whole vibration just happened. We are in a space, it's hot out, it's going to try and get it to temperature. Turn dial makes it extremely easy to operate. So I can turn down the fan, which is that right there, okay? Or I can hit the temperature button on the top, which will then go to change the temperature. So right now it's set to 86 Fahrenheit. I can target, I can go all the way down to 71, 70, 69. It goes every other, by the way. So it stays on odd numbers, which I find is a little odd. Now what's really nice about this digital reader is it'll actually tell you the amount of hours you have left on the battery before it does kick off. So that is a little helpful for you, but that will probably fluctuate depending on climate. So right now it says that I have 35 hours in the current state that I'm in, where I'm at, etc., and so forth. So in regards to controlling this unit, lastly, I wanna talk about probably EcoFlow's coolest, coolest, coolest thing that I have seen so far, which is app control. So you can download the EcoFlow app off of Google Play or Apple Store, and then you can control this via Bluetooth. That is next level to me. I will throw up a screen recording for everybody so you guys can see what I'm talking about when it comes to controlling this with your app. But that is, that is remarkable to me. I love that EcoFlow is kind of going in that direction where all of their things are going to be Bluetooth connectivity. So I can control this off of Bluetooth. I can control their other devices off of Bluetooth. That to me is a game changer. Let's say I'm in a van and I want to control this for whatever reason and I'm laying down or I'm in a different part. Maybe I have in the tiny house or whatever it may be. I want to control it through my phone. I can do that very easily. I don't have to go over to the thing and move the turn dial, etc., and so forth. Before I get into my opinions of it and where I would use it and how I would use it. Let's talk about how this operates and how it works real quick. If you are familiar with air conditioners, you have to understand two things. One, it does create condensation and there is a drain hose that is that goes with this and it will drain out. You have to drain that out somewhere or you're gonna have a puddle of water somewhere. Now, what are these and what are the purposes of these? Okay, well, air conditioning units have to vent that air. If, if you could feel this right now, you would feel that there's air, it's still on, it's still running, there's air coming out the side, the back here. Oh, by the way, one of, I do wanna mention this real quick. I didn't real, I didn't touch upon this, which is the timer. You can actually set a timer to this. So if you wanted to only run it for four hours in the night or five hours while you're out hiking, then you can set the timer on when it's gonna shut off. So for air conditioners, you don't want that hot air, which is coming out the back, it's releasing, it's venting the air, okay? You don't want that to be venting into your space because then this is just gonna be working overtime. If you're exhausting hot air into the space, that's kind of makes no sense. Why would you do that? You either want to place this outside and then you want to use this to hook on to here and then you can use the smaller of the tubes 
to then go into there and then you can vent it into your space. That creates a hose going into the space that you're in and then this contraption is outside which that hot air will stay outside. The other option is putting this onto the back, which I'm gonna turn this off, so it's noise-wise, it makes more sense. And then you would hook that up onto the back there, which I'm not gonna fully do, but it was actually quite easy if I just snapped it into place. Large hose goes on the bottom, the smaller hose goes into the top, and now you can actually have the front vent pointing into your space or however you want to do it and then you can vent those two tubes outside how would I use this and where do I see it beneficial and then I'll go into what I don't like about it I come from the van life space okay I was a full-time van life for three and a half years which means I lived in a van for three and a half years full time that was my sleeping that was my area of eating that was my area of work that was everything I did in life was inside of this 60 square foot van. The second van I had, I had a 12 volt air conditioner. It was not one of these portable ones, it was a different air conditioner. I don't wanna say it's any better, I'm just saying it's different. Costly, it's way more expensive. Full-time van life? I don't know if I would invest into this. For part-time van life, for part-time camping, for part-time car camping, or car travel, or driving three months across the country, or something along that, I think that this unit is by far the best thing you could possibly do for yourself. If you are taking a summer road trip from June to August, May to August, May to September, April to July, somewhere in there, if you're taking a massive road trip and you're gonna be car camping, sleeping in your tent, maybe bouncing around Airbnbs, whatever, having an air conditioning unit that is like this is by far probably one of the best investments you could probably make. It's perfect for boondocking. The only thing that you would have to do in regards to car camping or even van life is you're going to have to create some sort of template or some sort of like thing to put in the window so you could put this onto the back and then you'd have to have your tubes go out of like one of the windows. So you'd have to create some sort of like cardboard cutout or even like a nice piece of wood and put that up against the window and that should vent out that hot air. If you are a full-time van lifer, right? And you don't want to invest all that money in a rooftop unit or a, a 12 volt air conditioning unit or whatever it might be, but you want something for your animals. Again, I think that the, the EcoFlow Wave is a great investment for that reason. I think it's a great idea for cooling down or keeping your space cold enough for your loved animals. I mean, tent camping, yeah, it makes the most sense in the world to use it for tent camping. Truck camping, which is what I get into, and car camping, which is what I'm getting into, overlanding, I think it's an absolute game changer, absolutely. Problem is, you can't kind of pack this very easily. You kind of have to pack accordingly. What you see behind me is my tiny house. I am putting a massive air conditioning unit in my tiny house. It's gonna be a little bit bigger and beefier than this, However, there's going to be a section of this tiny house, actually two sections now that I'm thinking of it, that are going to be a little closed off to my massive air conditioning unit. So what I would probably consider doing is, especially in the summer months because heat rises, I have a loft on that upper section. That loft is probably gonna get pretty hot. Now that's not my sleeping quarters, okay? But if you do have a tiny house, you will know that your lofts get very, very, very hot in the summertime. So you could cool down the loft space with something like this very easily. In my opinion, is it the best portable air conditioning unit I have seen to date? Yes, it is. Will I be using it personally? Yes, I do. Yes, I will. EcoFlow has been coming a, like on hard with their products and I can't wait to actually dive into more EcoFlow products. Now I did tell you that I'm gonna end the video with something I don't like. And it's really only one thing, and that is, it's a very simple thing. Well, I just realized two things I don't like as I'm recording this, okay. I didn't realize this, this is simple, this was kind of my stupidity. You have to hold the power button down to turn it off. I just held the power button down and it just turned off. So 
that was a little bit of stupidity on my part, but I, I, I learned it. I, I realized that I made that mistake and I'm gonna own it. Yesterday when I was showing this to my dad, we had it, it was another, it was another hot day, right? And I was displaying it and we were both actually holding it like this. And we were cooling ourselves down because the vent is right here and it was blowing on us and it was like, it was feeling good on our bodies because we were out here working on the framing of the tiny house. Well, we both did this and it was a, it was a mistake but we, we were both apparently holding the power button and it shut off. It's a very sensitive power button. It doesn't take a lot for it to turn on or turn off. Apparently you have to hold it. Our arms were hitting it because we were gripping it like this. The sensitivity, again, this isn't a bad thing, but the sensitivity of the button, I guess can be the one thing I don't like about it. If, you, if, I'm, if I'm out truck camping and I have it stored in my truck, and something may fall on top of it and just tap the button, it's possibility it could turn on and then kill the battery before I even get to use it later that evening for if I wanna sleep comfortably. So I guess that's really the only con to this, but it's really not even that big a deal. I'm just, the Bluetooth capability makes up for all of that. And guys, I would have shown this in better action. Unfortunately, I just didn't have the time. I just got this product and I had to get this video out. I will be able to show more of this in active shots as I as I as I play with it more. And guys, thank you for tuning into the video. Let me know in the comments below if you are gonna go pick up your own EcoFlow Wave. Also check the description because I'm sure I'm gonna have a link for the EcoFlow Wave as well as any other EcoFlow products. Check to see if there is a discount code. I'm not sure if there is, but please check to see if there is going to be a discount code. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you wanna check out some more build videos of me at the tiny house, I'm also looking for land. I'm gonna be building my own shop, not the one I'm in now. I'm leasing this one, but on said land, I'll be putting the tiny house. I'll be making a shop where I can do more van builds, retrofitting old RVs. I'll be doing epoxy woodworking. I'll be doing reclaimed pallet furniture, all of the good stuff on this piece of land. I can't wait to get into all of that in the years to come. So stay tuned for all of that and we'll see you guys next time.